Hello, my name is Lucy Alexander. I am the Engineering Associate at the AICHE Institute for Sustainability. And I'm joined here today by Olivier Dubois, the coordinator of the energy program at the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO. Olivier gave a talk today at the World Cafe on the Energy Water Food Nexus, where he brought a unique food um, perspective to the conversation on the Nexus. Olivier, you stated today that one third of the total um, end use energy in the world is consumed by the agri food chain. Can you tell us what the implications of the statistic are? Well, it means that the, the food sector has a very big role in, 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 in the use of energy, obviously, but also in terms of all the implications in relation to water use, which is already used a lot in agriculture. 70% of the available water is used in, in agriculture. In terms of what uh, the, the, the the water used in energy that can be used that would be used for for uh, for the agri food chain. One interesting aspect of this, another one, is that uh, of these thirty percent, seventy percent of the energy used in agri food chain is used uh, beyond the farm gate. So not at the production stage, but all the transport, processing, drying, consumption stages, retailing, cooking, and all that. So that's something that is usually not known. People usually con concentrate on the on-farm use of energy, but most of the energy used beyond, beyond the farm gate. And so another aspect which is important to, to, to have in mind is that about 30% of the food we produce is basically lost or wasted. And together with that goes about 30% of the energy used in the agriculture. So these are important statistics to, to bear in mind. On the other hand, the agri-food chain is a unique sector in the sense that it can also produce energy. So that's another interesting aspect. Thank you. And so how can we address the issues in the agri-food chain from a nexus perspective? The thing is, the, the use and production of energy is very much linked to the use and production of food. It is also very much connected to the use of, of water. And so these three resources and products are in closely intertwined. And so you cannot uh, assess one without looking at the other sector. Uh, currently, a lot of people in the world do not have access to enough food, enough safe water, and modern energy services. So that there's already a big challenge in terms of access to these resources. But the challenge will not go away, it will actually increase if we do business as usual in the sense that in the next decades we will need more, let's say 40% more food, 40% more water and 40% more energy globally. And for the first time these needs will occur simultaneously. So this is a big, big challenge and if you add to that that resources are very much degraded in the world, I mean 25% of our arable land is, is degraded and climate change adds to the challenge. So to address this, you need to use an integrated approach between that takes into account land needs, food needs, water needs, energy needs, and the production of food and energy. And uh, this, you also need to look at what is needed in terms of investments, capital, and labor, so these are the resource assets that you need to, to look at uh, in an integrated way so that then you can debate about what should be the development goals in terms of land use, food production, energy use and production and water use. So the fact is because of these challenges that I, I just mentioned, you now need to look at these in an integrated way because they allow you to address trade-offs but also to look at synergies between the use of these resources and the production of food and, and, and energy. So that's, that's, that's kind of a new, a, new, a, new, a new thing because we have a big challenge ahead of us. And uh, there are some interesting examples where we, show, we can show that by using a, a nexus approach, you achieve better results. One example that comes to mind in, in, is the, the use of energy for irrigation in, 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 uh, in Punjab, in India. 
Punjabi is the biggest producer of, of, uh, like of cereals in, in, in India. And up to recently, the energy for irrigation was, was free. And so the rich farmers were using uh, uh, energy for irrigation. They were giving some e uh, energy to the, to the poor farmers because it was for free. The issue is, is that there was overuse of energy. Energy was not used efficiently. Overuse of groundwater uh, for irrigation. So not, not sustainable. But also the utility companies were not making any money. So a first solution that was sought to address this was to just basically putting a price on the energy used for irrigation, like installing meters. But this did not solve out the, the problem because the same cost of energy for irrigation was also applied for the, the, the need for energy for the village, the household level, the household needs. But also the poor farmers could not access energy anymore, and so they could not irrigate their fields anymore. Now the people sought more now as a solution more along a nexus perspective. For instance, you not you in terms of energy, you separate the energy needs for, for the household at the village level and the energy used for for irrigation. You have smart metering in the sense that the energy is just given for the amount of water that is needed and not like a blanket solution. But also you look at other aspects such as in terms of agriculture, food production, then you say we will use uh, varieties of wheat and rice that are more adapted to dry conditions. Or you will diversify your agricultural production by combining with tree uh, production, uh, fruit production from trees. And uh, from a water perspective, you can say, well, we also need to look at how to reduce the water leakages in the irrigation system. And therefore, by combining an energy perspective, an agricultural perspective, and a water perspective, you develop synergies instead of just looking at things separately. So that's one very good example. Another example is the food versus fuel in terms of biofuel production, where, I mean, FAO, we've been working quite a lot on this, and it's a very complex topic, but simple solutions or sweeping statements do not apply. For example, saying that food-based biofuels are always bad for food production, food security, is not always true. For example, sugar cane in Brazil, sugar cane is a, is a food crop. It's also used to produce ethanol, and it's not known for causing problems in terms of food security. Another one is palm oil in Indonesia. 30% of the palm oil is produced by small-scale farmers who produce palm oil in addition to food crops. So if you say we should not anymore do biodiesel out of palm oil, you reduce the opportunities the market opportunities for these small-scale farmers. On the other hand, if you say energy crops never cause uh, food security problems, it's also not always true because energy crops can compete for land use with food crops. So if the farmers cannot make enough money out of energy crops to buy the food, then there's an indirect possible competition with food. Also, using residues from agriculture to, to produce uh, bioenergy can sometimes cause food security problems indirectly because the residues from agriculture are used for soil quality, soil fertility, soil protection, but also for animal feed. So if you take the, the residues that are used for soil quality or for animal feed to produce bioenergy, then a solution must be found for soil fertility and animal feed which indirectly can cause problems for the farmer because he needs to buy more fertilizer, he needs to buy animal feed, and therefore he may not be able to buy enough food, or maybe the food production will be lower. So these things show that the problems are not easy. You need to, to embrace the complexity and look at them from different perspectives, combine them. So they, these are two examples which for me show the, the advantage of using a, a nexus. Thank you very much for speaking, me, for speaking to me today and presenting at this morning's World Cafe. Thank you very much.